Now we are going to study about the strength of the acid and bases, right? As I told you, there the acids are categorized into two categories depending upon their degree of dissociation. That is the strong acid and this the weak acid. Similarly, the strong base and a weak base, right? So we are just going to study about the strength of the acid and bases now. That how, like, if somebody asks you to derive it in a mathematical order, then how you are going to do that, right? So how I'm doing it? See, for an acid. I am taking the acid as, a, as an example. Suppose I have the weak acid that is the acetic acid. I know that when I will dissolve in water then I am going to get an equilibrium between the acetate ion and the hydroxide ion. Right. So, if I say that the initial concentration of this acetic acid is C and this concentration is 0. This I am taking that is an initial concentration. Right. Now, at equilibrium what I get at equilibrium if alpha is the degree of dissociation right if alpha is the degree of dissociation that means the amount of acetate ion produced is c alpha and similarly the h ion is c alpha and the, what we get from the acetic acid that means c is equal to minus c alpha that can be written as c 1 minus alpha right now i am writing an expression for it equilibrium constant expression or you can say that it is the acetate ion the hydrogen ion divided by the acetic acid and the water. You know that how I have written this. You know the, what is the logic behind, right? Now I am multiplying this H2O factor with this. What I get? I get Ka. So it is the acetate ion, the hydrogen ion and the acetic acid. Right, so this is now the ionization constant for an acid, right. So now I am just uh, this thing substituting the value of this into this. So what I get, this is C alpha, this is again C alpha and this is C1 minus alpha, right. By the solving it, we get C square alpha square C1 minus alpha, right. Here you can see that we can cancel this C with the square, right. So we are left with C alpha square 1 minus alpha, right. If I consider or, or it is not a, uh, you can say a met, uh, the my opinion for considering the acetic acid, we know that the acetic acid is a weak acid that means it dissociates up to a very small extent, right. So likewise in this case, in this expression I can just neglect the degree of dissociation considering because it is a weak acid it dissociates only to a small extent, right. So. For, uh, we can neglect alpha in this case and after neglecting what I get is Ka is equal to C alpha square divided by 1 right if you write 1 or not you do not write 1 it does not make a difference you know that so what do I get like if I want to know the strength so I have to uh, get the expression for the degree of the dissociation so this is what I am doing here so this is alpha is equal to Ka upon square root of uh, Ka upon C. So, this is the you can say the degree of dissociation for an acid. So, this is how you are going to derive the expression for the degree of dissociation for an acid for a weak acid if you know, want to know the strength of an acid. So, by looking at this relation have you got some something strike in your mind something has knocked your mind or not. Yes, you are right. It is the same expression in the same way we did for a weak electrolyte. The only difference lies in that it was Ki and here it is Ka. That's it. And even the expression which uh, is uh, we have obtained in this case is the similar one. The difference is only this A. That is, it is for an acid and that degree of dissociation was for an electrolyte. That's it. So as we did in Oswald dilution law, I think you can uh, easily recall it. So this is how you are going to do the, uh, know the strength of an acid by just uh, calculating an expression, deriving an expression for the alpha A. Similarly, we do it for the base, right? So suppose I am just doing it for the base. It's easy for you to do now, but still I am doing it just uh, so that you should be familiar with this expression as well. So we get this. Right. So, in second thing what we are going to write, we are going to write the law of uh, you can say the um, expression for the equilibrium constant. So, that means K is equal to NH4 positive and OH negative divided by NH3 and water. Right. This is the multiplication sign. Do not forget. Right. So, after we know that if I multiply this H2O with K, you know that it becomes KB. That is the ionization constant for a base. So, it is NH4 positive 
OH negative divided by concentration of NH3, right. So now I am just considering the concentration as I did in this case. Suppose initially it was C and it was 0 and 0. With passage of time, if degree of dissociation is uh, alpha, uh, alpha, then at equilibrium what we are going to get is C minus C alpha, the concentration of NH3 and for this we are going to get C alpha and C alpha. So it comes out to be C minus C1 minus alpha. So just substituting this value into this as we did for Ka, what we get? C alpha, C alpha, C1 minus alpha, right. So, it, if after just uh, solving it, we have this. As we neglected alpha in that case, I think you remember I neglected the alpha in the, this case just considering that it is a weak acid, so we can neglect it. So in a similar manner, I am just neglecting the alpha in this case uh, considering it is a weak base, right. I am not considering, I am just again repeating that it is a weak base, right. So if you are writing a general expression, then consider it, otherwise just write uh, uh, blindly that yes, it is a weak base, so you have to neglect the alpha in this case. So what do we have now? It is C alpha square upon 1 and alpha comes out to be square root of Kb upon C and it is again for base. So, I am writing the subscript B for alpha. So, this is an expression that how you are going to do it for the calculating the strength of an asset and strength of a base right but now the question comes if you get two assets now because this we have done for one asset and this I have done for one base right but if you get a question that compare the strength of HCl and H2SO4 so what how you are going to do you know that that HCl and H2SO4 that means both are uh, both are assets that right so we need to have the degree of dissociation for an asset right so you know that the alpha is directly proportional to the uh, this thing ionization constant for an acid. So, in a similar manner, we will do that 1 alpha A2 root Ka1 root Ka2. So, this is how this is how you have to solve when you get different acids and you just have to compare their strengths. Similarly, if you get a question for a base, so in a similar manner, you are going to do for this as well. Suppose this is B2, it is again equal to kb1 kb2 so this is how you are going to compare the strengths i think it is clear to you now that how we write uh, the this thing the how we calculate the degree of dissociation and how we get to know the this thing the strength of an acid right now one more thing what we get to observe is that we have uh, like uh, we have certain substances in which uh, the acid is present or you can say in which the hydrogen ion is present but the hydrogen ion present is more than one like i give you an example suppose i have hcl so what do you what information do you get from hcl it has one h right and if i take an example of h2so4 then it has two h and if i take an example of h3po4 it has three h so, that means the, it has the ability to do, uh, give 1H, it has the ability to give 2H and it has the ability to give 3H, right? Because they all are giving th uh, H ions, that means they all are acids, they belong to a same category, right? So, these type of uh, acids are called as polyprotic acids. That means this and this, those acids, acids which actually has a tendency to release more than one proton or you can say in more than one proteinium ion that is one, more than one hydrogen ion, they are said to be polyprotic acid, right. So I am just writing an expression in a general form for you, what, uh, how you get uh, ionization constant of acid for them. So we, I have an acid H2X suppose right so it has 2h as you can say you see it it is di basic in nature it has 2h it has a tendency to give two hydrogen ions right but in a in one go it is not going to give all its hydrogen ion in one go it is it will give at a time it is going to give only one hydrogen ion right so we say that it donates the, it just released one hydrogen ions and we are left with hx negative again an ionic equilibrium right and that suppose the value for this expression uh, the ionization constant for an acid for this expression comes out to be Ka1 similarly when it is we are left with 1 H more still in this acid right so that means in the second step it is going to give 
its next edge. Now there is no edge, so no further reaction is going to take place. And for this reaction, we have Ka as Ka2. Right. So this reaction I have written in two steps, but I can write in one step as well. So I'm writing this reaction in one step. So I can write in this way, right? So suppose I say the equilibrium constant expression for this is Ka3. Now how I am going to relate these values? So Ka3 is just you can say equal to Ka1 into Ka2. The same way we did for an electrolyte, right? That means if the reaction is occurring in a step, the equilibrium constant for a complete reaction is equal to the multiplication of the equilibrium constant for the different steps. So similarly, I did it for this. The only difference lies, uh, or you can say the only difference between this and that one was that they, here we have the ionization constant for an acid and that was the basic uh, uh, equilibrium constant. But still, the equilibrium constant obeys all those uh, characteristics which was obeyed by the chemical equilibrium that that is why the Ka also based all those characteristics of the chemical equilibrium because basically it is a chemical equilibrium constant. But when we are considering for the acid, we are just making it Ka. We are, if when we are considering for a base, we are making it Kb. The only difference is that otherwise it obeys all those properties of the chemical equilibrium constant. So this is we have. Now, if I compare the value of this, this and this, which value is going to be greater? Do you have any idea? Yes, you are right that Ka1 will be more than Ka2 and it will be more than Ka3. Now what is the reason behind it? The reason is that that when you uh, this thing uh, remove one first proton right so more is the negative charge difficult there is more difficulty in removing the pro uh, proton ion but as we proceed the uh, the negative charge is decreasing therefore the release of hydrogen ion is just becoming more easier so the, always uh, the ka1 that is to release the first proton ion first proton uh, or you can say the first hydrogen ion will be difficult and likewise its value will go on decreasing that is why ka1 will be more than ka Ka2 will be more than Ka3 because as we move the negative charge is getting reduced right. So similarly the similar thing I can do it for the base as well because we have many polyacidic basic bases. What is that? Suppose I see uh, here I have NaOH what you get to see 1OH that means it has 1OH so obviously it, is, it has a tendency to release only one hydroxide ion. But in this case, uh, we have 2OH. So similarly, we can have 3, we can have many. So we just write they are polyacidic basic. So any substance which has the tendency to release more than one hydroxide ion, it falls under the category of the polyacidic basic. So similarly, we can have an expression for it similar as I did for the acid. We can do it for the, that case also. And in that case also, the Kb1 will be going to be more than Kb2 will be uh, more than kb3 right so this is how you are just going to solve for uh, polyprotic acids and the bases right and i think you can recall that bronsted lorry concept as well as i told you that according to the bronsted lorry you, you know that the proton donor is an acid and the proton acceptor is a base so do keep in mind that every base uh, a strong base has a weak conjugate acid and every uh, you can say a strong has acid has a weak conjugate base that is vice versa in that case right a, a strong acid weak conjugate base a strong base a weak conjugate acid right so this is how you're just going to compare the strengths right now the question must be arising that what is the factor which is responsible for you can say the the what is the factor behind that makes an acid or a base strong or a weak so that is only two factors which are responsible one out of them is one out of them is strength of bond and the other is polarity of bond. So as we have strong acid and weak acids, likewise we have strong base and weak base. So what are the factors that are making them strong or weak? So there are only two factors which are responsible. One is the strength of bond, other is the polarity of the bond. Now the question arises: what is the strength of bond? That means suppose I have an acid. So 
if this uh, force of attraction between this molecules or you can say these ions are weaker that means the strength of bond is weak and if the strength of bond is weak that means it can be uh, you can say broken easily and if it, it uh, if it gets broken then the release of hydrogen ion uh, may uh, becomes more easier so that means the stronger it is going to be an acid right and similarly if this bond appears to be strong then that means the bond uh, breakage is not so easy that means the release of hydrogen ion is not so easy so that means weaker acid it is going to be proven uh, later when we will study it right so similarly it happens for the base so I think it's clear that how the strength of the bond matters to make a substance a strong acid or a strong base or a weak acid or a weak base it is just the force of attraction between the atoms which are clubbed to form a molecule so if weaker is the force and uh, more easily it can just donate the H ion or hydroxide ion and likewise it is going to behave uh, in a strong manner now the second factor is the polarity what is that polarity is that suppose I have an example of an acid HCl what you get to see in this we get that chlorine is more electronegative that means the there is a uh, difference in the electronegativity so that means it is going to attract the shared pair more toward itself and as a result it is going to acquire this partial negative and positive charge so that means more polar is the bond more easier is to donate the hydrogen ion and the less polar is the bond uh, or you can say lesser is the electronegativity difference less polar will be the bond and the difficulty of the H ion will be more difficult so weaker will be the uh, its nature right so this is how the two factors just uh, make the substance the strong or a weak so there are only two factors which are responsible just keep in mind one is the strength of the bond no matter if the bond is between H and A that means the hydrogen ion or any respective uh, atom which is present along or whether it is in basis it is just the strength and the polarity between the atoms which are just present in the molecule